This is a photo that I found on the British Museum website. We were recently visiting the British Museum in London, UK, and we saw this Egyptian stool. It's probably several thousand years old that was found in one of the pharaoh tombs and I was fascinated by the structure and assembly of this stool. It has those uh, shapes in the seat yet they've accommodated uh, expansion, the wood expansion with the gaps in the slats in the seat and it looks like there is mortise and tenon joinery, pinned mortise and tenon joinery. The uh, lower stretchers are staggered so that the tenons don't interfere and also I noticed these diagonal bracings which really give the stool quite a bit of strength and sturdiness and and can resist a lot of uh, sway uh, movement of the stool. So I was very interested in possibly making this piece, reproducing it, and I took a picture while at the museum, but this picture is a better picture right uh, from the museum website. And I brought it and imported it in, into SketchUp as a new matched photo option. And let me just show you the uh, perspective uh, setup. I'll edit the matched photo and now you can see the perspective bars and the origin setup the red and green perspective bars that I put on here the photo worked quite well in lining up the blue and the green and the red axis so I was able then to trace over the uh, photo and uh, let me just show you some of the here's a face of a leg here's another face another face of a leg a stretcher some of these diagonal and vertical spindles and then this seat shaping I was able to capture by tracing over using the arc and line tools so what that creates then is this these are the traced over shapes. They're just groups. And I need to then turn these into components. I have not resized the photo for the full size. I just, in fact, this thing is pretty big. Um, if I just measure here, that's like 91 inches tall. Well, that's okay. I'll, I'll work with this model at this extreme oversize and that will help me during some of the intersections that I have to do in these complicated shapes like this seat. So from this then I took these little faces and made started to make the components. For example making the legs. Here's a Here's the face that was traced over and then I push pulled these things into the and rotated them like making a cabriole leg doing the intersection and then ending up with a with a component like that with a little bit of a taper and then this little hook on the top edge there uh, and I've got a leg component. Well then I started to tackle the seat. Uh, the 
the uh, trace over gave me this shape right here because I could get this front shape and then just do a push pull. So I made a copy of that group and put it up here, but I rotated it 90 degrees and then I just coincided these two pieces like this and uh, exploded the groups and then did an intersection and then a cleanup and I have a a seat here that is now shaped in both directions. It's without the slats so uh, I needed to create the, the seat slats by doing some more intersection way that I made the slats by uh, setting up a, a line and, and uh, breaking it into its number of segments and, and then I created these uh, rectangular cutting cutting shapes and cutting planes and again did intersections to cut all these individual slats. Of course there's really only three unique components in in here because uh, several of them are, are just copied and mirrored. So this then gave me the seat slats that are shown here and then I needed to also create the the long rails at the top which are the same width as the slats so I again created these rectangular cutting shapes and did the intersection and now I've got a seat with all these different parts but I don't have the gaps for expansion and contraction that are needed so uh, again I trimmed each of these slats with those same kind of cutting uh, rectangles as shown before and and then I also, so I've got gaps now, but notice that this, this assembly now is the full assembly and it's only 18 inches high. So I have resized the model, but obviously I didn't resize this model, otherwise it would have resized the whole everything in the model but it was good to have a larger size when doing all these intersections it prevents the, these little small facets and gaps in the models so uh, so then after doing all that intersection work I was able to then resize the model down to its uh, real size which is 18 inches high so I just used the um, tape measure tool and clicked on the leg here and it said 90 some inches and then I just typed in 18 and it asks do you want to uh, resize the whole model and I said yes and so it resulted and everything in the model being resized. So that means all the thicknesses of pieces. For example, these rails are now, uh, they're actually 5 eighths, I think. Uh, well, it says 9 sixteenths. So then the next step after getting all the pieces sized and connected 
I began to create the joinery. That meant mortise and tenon joints. So the top of the legs have a little post that goes up into the upper rails here. The seat slats go into are, are tenoned and go into mortises that are in the upper rail. Uh, and that's going to be a difficult uh, connection. I don't know how what kind of joinery was actually used. I suspect they were tenons, just mortise and tenon joints, just like this, but I don't know that for sure. So all the mortises are, are in the model now and in the legs, for example, for the stretchers. Uh, so the next step then was how, how am I going to make in the shop, how am I going to make these slats that are just uh, have complex shapes. So the way I plan to do this is, uh, for example, that upper rail. I've got a, the blank shown here, which is a rectangular block of wood that is two and seven sixteenths inch uh, thick. Uh, yes, thick, three inches wide. And I'll use, I'll use that rectangular piece then to create the mortises like that are shown here um, and then do the reshape the shaping of the piece after doing the joinery so that's how I'm going to attack the actual shop work here uh, the seat blanks also have this kind of a blank and the way I did this in SketchUp, I, I used um, a material. Uh, I used a material up here and a, a cyan colored material. And then I set it to be transparent somewhat so that I could see the shaped component inside of the rectangular block. Uh, so in this case, I needed this dimension for the height of this rectangular block. And I'll create the tenons while in that rectangular shape. And then do the, uh, the complex shaping later. So the final assembly is shown here. And uh, I'll be uh, working this uh, beginning probably this week. Uh, I did want to use a recent uh, shaving horse that I built recently. So I uh, actually used some fresh cut green wood uh, collected on the site here and uh, I'll show a, a picture of that resulting um, interpretation of this stool uh, in that green wood but I plan to do it in regular lumber here in the next uh, few weeks.